Hello, I'm Alex and welcome to the History Chronicles. If you like our work, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel in return for exclusive perks, please visit our Patreon page. Now, on with the video. What are the Marian reforms, and how did they impact the Roman military and society? Let's find out in today's episode of the History Chronicles. Today's History Chronicle begins in the Roman Republic in 107 BC. The Roman Republic had rapidly expanded as it conquered and defeated rivals like the Greeks and the North African state of Carthage. These conquests added vast swathes of territory to the Republic, which now stretched from modern-day Spain to Turkey. However, the rapid expansion of the empire brought with it a host of new problems, including social unrest as well as political violence. The Roman Republic was a classical republic, or a government that was run by representatives of the people. These men were elite landholders and formed what they called the Senate. The Senate in turn would elect two consuls, or leaders of the Republic. These men were the highest state officials and were responsible not only for the peacetime duties of government, but were also to be the leaders of the Republic's army. In 107 BC, the newest consul was a man by the name of Gaius Marius. Marius became famous as he enacted the Marian reforms that not only transformed the Roman military, but Roman society as well. It is worth noting that in academic circles, there has been some debate about whether the Marian reforms really happened or not. While this debate is still ongoing, there appears to be more evidence for the reality of the Marian reforms than against them. Gaius Marius was born in 157 BC to local nobles in Arpinum, a town located in central modern-day Italy. His family's wealth helped support him and his brother as they advanced in politics. In 134 BC, Marius joined the legion of Scipio Aemilianus, who was leading a campaign in modern-day Spain. Thus began his participation in Rome's conquests. It became quickly apparent that Marius was determined to rise in Roman politics as he ran for various public offices, including posts in the army. But despite his efforts, Marius remained outside the highest levels of power until he gained celebrity status following his exploits in the Jugurthine War. The Jugurthine War was a conflict between the Roman Republic and Jugurtha, a Numidian king. The Numidian kingdom was located in modern-day Algeria along the North African coast. The war was sparked when Jugurtha, in direct defiance of Rome, launched a war against his cousins, Hiempsal and Aderbal, who both held control of portions of the Numidian kingdom. Jugurtha quickly defeated Hayabsal and launched a protracted siege against Aderbal, who had retreated to his capital at Cirta. Aderbal's army contained numerous Roman citizens, and when the city was finally defeated, Jugurtha ordered the Romans massacred. This event incited outrage in Rome, and in 112 BC, the Senate sent its armies to crush Jugurtha. After three years, Marius joined the war as the second in command of Quintus Cecilius Metellus's army. Metellus was a conservative politician who was known for his sense of honour and abilities as a consul. When they arrived in North Africa in 109 BC, the situation looked dire for Rome. One army had been bribed to return home, another had been completely defeated in battle. With the arrival of Metellus and Marius, the war shifted in favour of the Romans. Metellus and Marius helped restore confidence in the Roman soldiers. They salvaged the failing campaign and began to see small victories against the Numidians. Several of these victories were due to the quick thinking and courage of Marius. These victories heightened his popularity in Rome, something he desperately needed in order to rise in Roman politics. In 108 BC, Marius returned to Rome a war hero and began his campaign to be elected a consul of the Senate. Marius was elected in part because of Romans' frustration with the corruption of the elites in the Senate. Marius aided these efforts by spreading rumours of corruption and discrediting his former commander Metellus. By appealing to the people as a virtuous newcomer to politics, Marius garnered a large following and enough votes in the Senate to become a consul in 107 BC. After his election, he also began to ally himself with the Popularis Party. The Populares were a political faction that supported the right of the plebeians, or poor freemen. It was in this context that Marius began his famous reforms during his consulships between 107 BC and 100 BC. These have become known as the Marian Reforms. Prior to the Marian Reforms, Fighting for the Roman Republic was connected directly to property holding, and was voluntary. This requirement made it impossible for poor citizens of the Republic to fight in the army as they were required to own property and outfit themselves for military duty. Furthermore, at the end of each year, the army would disband and a new army would be formed from volunteers. 
Though some men repeatedly volunteered and gained significant military experience, most Romans sought to avoid military service. For Marius, the reforms were essential, not only for the survival of the Republic, but also for his political career. When Marius became the junior consul, he was tasked with ending the Jugurthine War in Africa. However, Marius, undaunted by the lack of recruits, moved quickly to create a new Roman military that would allow him access to greater numbers of men. Soon after his election in 107 BC, Marius began his monumental reforms. His reforms significantly impacted the Republic in four ways. First, the reforms created a permanent military for the Roman Republic. Second, the army enlistment was opened to the poor. Third, the Roman Republic would offer retirement benefits to former soldiers such as land grants. Finally, Roman citizenship was granted to all those who chose to join the Roman army, including those who had only been allies of the Republic. These four reforms would have a tremendous impact on the future of Roman society. Marius had long been critical of the voluntary nature of the army and moved to make military service a career. This was something that had begun to occur already in the Roman armies but had not yet been fully realised. Volunteers were often undisciplined and recruitment was very hard to achieve. His soldiers were drilled and trained year-round in preparation for combat. In this training, Marius' armies received identical training and tactics thus allowing the armies to be well coordinated and unified. Not only did they train, but the army was reorganised into the Roman legion system. Each legion contained roughly 4,800 soldiers. The legion was composed of 10 cohorts, each cohort containing about 480 men. The cohort was broken into six centuries, which contained roughly 80 men. These practices created strong bonds between the soldiers and helped increase the professional nature of the Roman army. These massive armies were new to the Republic and were composed of a wider swath of Roman society. One of Marius' most significant reforms of the military was his opening of it to the common man. As noted earlier, Roman military service had been reserved almost exclusively for the elites in society. Only in times of emergency had the poor been allowed to fight for Rome. By promising soldiers pay for a term of 16 years, as well as the spoils of war, Marius made the military an attractive career path. He opened enlistment to all classes of citizens, including the landless poor. These citizens had often been relegated to the fringes of public life, but with Marius' reforms these men of little means could rise above their station. Masses of poorer citizens flocked to join Marius' army, thereby transforming the nature of the traditional Roman army. However, these poor often had no means to purchase or supply themselves with weapons of war. Marius solved this problem as well. He arranged for the Roman state to supply the poor with armour and weapons. This was a drastic shift from previous decades where the soldiers were to bring their own weapons and supplies. He also moved to have the soldiers carry their own supplies and tents rather than having the traditional baggage trains. This allowed for his army to not only rely less on expensive pack animals but it also made his forces more mobile. This combined with the increased discipline gained from extensive training made Marius' army truly formidable. The third reform allowed land grants to be given to soldiers who completed their 16 years in the army. These land grants enabled poor men to become landed men, thus elevating their status in society as well as that of their children. These lands came from the newly conquered regions of the Roman Republic in modern-day Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Spain, France, Greece, Turkey and Italy. Marius' reforms also benefited the elites by providing vast retirement funds to generals and officers. In both cases, soldiering for the Republic became much more desirable for all parties. Some modern historians have suggested that this reform came not from Marius, but from his Senate allies Lucius Apulius Saturninus and Gaius Servilius Glaucia. These men were populists and supported the other reforms, and as Marius was busy fighting wars, he allowed these men to promote the resettlement of former soldiers. His final reform was significant in that it opened Roman citizenship to anyone who would willingly fight in the Roman army. Roman citizenship had been tightly controlled and was difficult for outsiders to receive. Marius' own town had only a few generations previously received Roman citizenship, although it had been in Rome's sphere of influence for decades. The fourth reform also made the Roman army a path to citizenship for the people of conquered territories. It increased the number of people that Marius could draw upon when recruiting for his armies. The Marian reforms had several large impacts that transformed Roman society. First, the Marian reforms gave Gaius Marius significant power and helped his armies to win multiple victories. Second, the reforms opened up citizenship to more people. People of various ethnicities in the coming decades and centuries joined the Roman legions and gained access to the benefits of Roman citizenship. 
The reforms also gave the poor a new status and the ability to rise in society. Rather than simply be relegated to the sidelines, the poor could participate in the process of building the Republic, and later the Empire. The poor joined in tremendous numbers, in part because the army offered them a way to earn a living and earn future land for themselves and their families. Land ownership was a hallmark of upper class society in the Roman Republic and was the key to social climbing. Finally, the reforms also challenged the very nature of the Roman army. Rather than being voluntary armies, the military became a professional force that trained even in times of peace. These reforms changed the course of history. Marius became known as the third founder of Rome, and one of Rome's most important statesmen prior to the rise of Julius Caesar. Yet far more impactful was how his reforms enabled the Romans to dominate the Mediterranean world for the next several centuries. It enabled the Roman military to play a larger role in the politics of society. Men like Julius Caesar and Octavian depended on the effective fighting force made by Marius in order to create the Roman Empire. Marius, in seeking to protect the Republic and his career as consul, helped lay some of the seeds that would later lead to the downfall of the Roman Republic. You have been watching the History Chronicles. We'd love to know what you think of the Marian reforms. Please let us know below, and if you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Also, if you'd like to support our work going forward, please visit our Patreon page. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of the History Chronicles.